welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology and in this video tutorial we will be talking about flow cytometry. I already uploaded a video on flow cytometry animation a couple of years back and I get some good response for that. But this is going to be a video to give you a just basic overview of what flow cytometry really is and what those graphs of flow cytometry talks about. So stay tuned and watch this video. Flow cytometry is a technique cellu cellular technique or cytological technique you can say to detect the number of cells that is present in a sample or in a mixture okay you can detect you can count the number of cells using laser beam okay. so let's say let's say here in this in this vial there are thousands of cells present okay and those cells are different they are not all same they are different cells for example these red cells these red cells are much complex right they have granules inside the cells while these blue cells have medium less granules and finally this this green cells don't have any granules inside the cell they are smaller one cells so this mixture is filled with different types of cells and you need to know the number of cells and the number of cells for each type and also you need to know the associated cellular complexity with them. So what are the techniques you have to get all this information? You, if you take this sample and if you put it in the microscope and check it, it's tedious, it's time consuming and also counting all the cells there is also very tedious. So beside all this thing, we have a technique called flow cytometry which will help us to know the number of cells that are present including their internal complexity and shape and structure of those cells. So it's a single lab technique that will tell us so many informations about different cells. So you can just do the experiment using the, the blood or blood cells because you know in blood there are multiple types of cells with different structure, different shape and different inter, in, in the internal complexity. So if we take this as an example, so what is the idea and how flow cytometry detect the cells? So in flow cytometry, we have a kind of a column like thing through which cells or mixture of cells are passing all the time. This is moving and that column, why we need that column? Because the column is designed in such a way so that ultimately at the end there is a very thin line, very, very thin uh, the border of the column, the mouth of the column. Because let's say here we have a mixture of cells, so all the types of cells are present there. Cells, red cells, complex red cells, okay, and also blue cells. So all these cells are present in this mixture, okay. Now they are present in such a way so that uh, this, this, this mouth is very thin so that every time a single cell can only pass. Okay, so we design the column in such a way. A single cell should only pass. And once the single cell is passing, at the end there is a laser beam generation or laser machine which will generate the laser beam. This is the laser beam. Okay, this is the laser beam generator and it will generate the laser beam which will interact with the cell which is passing and there is a detector present in different regions okay the detector one is present directly the forward regions it is the detector number one and there are also detectors present in the side regions detector two type two okay this is very simple drawing to make you understand and finally those detectors are connected to a computer for the analysis of the data because ultimately you are going to get a lot of data coming from all these cells so it will be confusing if I give this data to you and tell you to explain so for that we have softwares written algorithms are placed there so they can easily detect without any mistake they can tell all the informations and they can separate all the informations from there so the idea here is that the cells will pass each of the cell will pass at its same at single time so one cell at single time passing and this laser beam is hitting that cell 
right? So it's just like counting with the laser hand. Just counting with the laser. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's how you can get the number. It's kind of easy that it will interact with the laser and whenever it's interact, it will take at as a one count. And then another cell count 2, cell number 3 count 3. So how could we know the complexity? How could we know the size and shape? For that, because for that we need to go for much more details. Because if you look at this region only, this laser beam is hitting the cell and there are two events that are possible. And that there is actually one event but two ways that event is possible. The event is scattering of the beam. So whenever the laser beam is hitting a cell, the cell is scattering that beam. So the scattering could be of two different types. One is the forward scatter, another one is the side scatter. Okay. Now forward scatter when happens, if the cell is very simple without any kind of granules or organelles, very less organelles are present, the internal complexity is very less, only cell membrane inside cytosol, few cell organelles. So there will be mostly, the, the beam will mostly pass through the cell. So it will give us a forward scatter. It is a forward scatter. Now if it goes through another cell which is little bit more complex, for example this red cell which is, which is much more complex. Let's delete that, red cell. It's complex, internal complexity is present. So this cell will scatter the beam in so many different directions. So it will scatter, take a different color for understanding the scatter, There's different scatters. This is known as side scatter, okay. So a cell can do forward scatter or side scatter when it's hitting, when it's, when it is hitted by a laser beam. So now this forward scatter and the amount of forward scatter that is occurring or that is happening, detector detects the voltage, the change in this voltage because the beam has a particular voltage and when it is going through it, this, this is changing the voltage. So it detects the fall or gain of the voltage. So here the detector finds out whether it is a forward scatter coming or the side scatters coming and ultimately it will be detected by the PC, analyzed by the PC. So if it is a forward scatter coming, forward scatter is directly proportional with the size of the cell, okay. Forward scatter varies with the size of the cell, okay. So if we get more forward scattered data, that means the cell size is big and bigger. But the side scatters, the side scatter is directly proportional with the shape and complexity, internal complexity of the cell. Because you know I told you, if there are more organelles present inside and if the cell contains so many granules and all the stuff inside, it will make the scattered in different angles, right. So we get more side scatter. So the more side scatter we get, that means the cell is more internally complex, okay. So we get this data from there. So not only we can get the number of cells that are passing, but we also get whether the cell, uh, what is the size of the cell, what is the shape of the cell and what are the internal complexity of the cell by the same way, only by using this idea of scattering. Now a question could be there the cells are very small, right. So how could we make all the cells coming in a single line? You know, at the earlier here you see the cells are not coming in the single lines, they are bunched. Now as you see the, the terminal mouth is very thin and along with that, what we do, we add some saline solution from the top, saline. So saline is consisting of water and sodium chloride. So this saline solution will go down through like this and as the saline is flowing from the top to the bottom like that, it will make what is known as a directional focusing. Directional means it is coming to the bottom. So all cells will also come to the bottom and as it creates a pressure because it is a little, con I mean it, the concentration is little more than the cellular there. 
So it will create a pressure, a, a concentration pressure to the down gradient because the salines are flowing from both of these sides which is keeping a specific constant pressure on cells so that each time a single cell should pass and fall down to that pressure gradient and come out only as one cell and that cell will hit the laser beam, scatter some light and it will get the data by the detector and finally feed on to the PC and PC will analyze the data, we will get the answer. Now during the analysis of the data what happens? The analysis of the data is also simple. We have a x axis and we have a y axis over there. In the x axis we put the voltage gradient or the voltage gradient that we have. In the y axis we put the number of cells that are available. So voltage and the number of cells. So what we can find? We can find the graphs like this, you know, as there are different cells coming out at different time, we find different graphs like, like for example, like this, so one graph. So you get that. Voltage means the voltage gradient or difference for the forward scatter, for example, for the, for the, this is for the forward scatter. We can also this get the same kind of graph for, for the side scatters. So now if we get the data for the forward scatter and side scatter and if we put them in the same graph, what it will look like? Let us say this. Yeah. Now say this is the forward data, forward graph data that we obtain and this is the side scatter data we obtain. So what you can see, this is side scatter, this is forward scatter for example, y, x, try to understand. You see here the cells are interacting here very less, very less also. So you will get a very small band there. You get a high and a high, so you get a very high, this is a point, this is another point of high. So from there what you can understand, you have a side scatter, high side scatter, you also have a high forward scatter here, high at this particular point, you have a high side scatter, you also have a high forward scatter. What does that mean? That means the cell size is big because you have a high peak in the forward scatter, that means cell size is big. You also have a high peak at the side scatter, that means cell is, cell is also complex. So the cells which are present here in this particular quadrant there. They are bigger cells and they are much more complex. Now at the very beginning here you see this is low side scatter, low forward scatter. That means the cells that are present here, the size of the cells are small as well as they are less complex. So what kind of cells are present at this place? This green cells, less complex and size are also small. And what kind of cells presented here? The red cells that we talk about, right? more complex and size is bigger from this mixture if we talk about. And let us say here as you see at this particular point, so this is high, the forward scatter is high or medium but here the side scatter is less. So what does that mean? If we, if we drag them, if we drag this with this, this point. So the cells that are present in this quadrant, the forward scatter is high and the side scatter is low. Forward scatter is high means the cells are bigger, but side scatter is low that means cells are simpler, not that much complex or shape is not that much twisted. So it could be the blue cells, right? The bigger cell but less complex. So the blue cells among this mixture are placed here, right? So using this process of flow cytometry, we can determine and distinguish between all the cells and where they are exactly present in the plot, we can find them out. So if we can find them out where exactly they are placed in the plot, we can know what kind of complexity those cells are having, okay. So this a single technique, but this single technique is very brilliant to give you the idea, not only about the size and shape of the cell and the number of the cell, but also Nowadays you can also use not only laser beam there, you can also use fluorescence dye. You know there are much more complexity, you can look at the different organelle complexity separately by tagging fluorescent dye with different regions of the cell. 
so that the scattering of the beam can be found from different angles and different organelles of the cell because the scattering can be varied due to the types of organelles that are present number of organelles that are present and stuff so you can find that also using a fluorescently tagged dye attached with those cells and cell organelles right so using a same flow cytometry, te flow cytometry technique you can use to know and all the information about the cell's complexity and what components of the cell is present and actually nowadays we have flow cytometers designed in such a way you can attach up to 17 fluorescent tags with different regions of the cell so if you have 17 fluorescent tags a same flow cytometry technique can give you the idea at the same experiment about those 17 different fluorophore that are coming out or fluorescence that is coming out so it's a very sensitive technique a very very important technique to know about the number of cells the complexity of the cells right and that's how it's done so if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that thank you